Hello, and welcome to Stage Screen and In Between. I'm Helen. Today is a very special day because I'm at the screening of Deborah Markowitz's film called Leaving. She's also the director. I have with me now the star, jo Joseph A. Halsey. Hi, Joe. Thank hey, you for joining me. You? Oh, I'm very happy to join you. How are you tonight? Good. Before we talk about the movie, could you first give me a little bit of your background? I, I believe you started on The Cosby Show. Oh, yes, yes. Back when I was very, very young, I was his pizza delivery boy. So that was, uh, that was very exciting. That was um, you know, my first time on a professional set. Yes, and that was a big production at the time. And uh, also, you were in Law and Order SVU, am I yes. right? Yes, I had um, a reoccurring role. So when they would need a cop to come in and basically say, "Hey, look, you know, dead body," I would <laughs> <laughs> they give me a call and I'd go in and I'd do my thing. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a little bit about leaving. Um, isn't it a little bit on the mysterious side? Am I correct? Well, without giving anything away, yes, yes <laughs> I. Um, it, it it's. It's mystical in one sense, but in another sense, it's um, it's very spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a um, it has a uh, love, it has loss, and it also has reuniting and moving forward. So that's pretty much how I can ex basically describe it right. without giving it away, um, because there is a little twist at the end that everybody would have to see. Yes, and. Um, uh, my lovely friend Deborah would kill me if I actually gave <laughs> the ending away. Is there anything that you had to do to get into character for this role? Well, you know, it's funny because typically um, I, I play a lot of roles that are uh, a little offbeat. Mm -hmm. And then I play... Well, the offbeat characters are always more interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. Um, but with, with Paul in Leaving, he was, um, he was very soulful, but yet very quiet. Mm -hmm. He was soft-spoken, you know... Um, so it, it took a lot, you know, I, I would call him, you know, a, a modern poet and he, he spoke and softly, but powerfully. And, and to do that, you know, it was, um, it was very difficult because it, it, it you know, you're acting more from inside out, mm -hmm. you know, it, because it's not a guy who shows a tremendous amount of emotion, but he feels it. So you have to basically show feeling yes. without showing feelings. Yeah. So it was, um, as far as getting into that role, I, I, <laughs> there's, there's a few things that, yeah, I went through to get yeah. into that. Yeah, without like, like saying, ta-da, I'm feeling this. <laughs> yes, it has to be subtle. Yeah, and I think that yeah. you did that because I, I, yeah. I did see it. Oh, you yes. did? Okay. I saw it before right. I came. Yes, right. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. And um, now, uh, let me ask you, how did you end up getting this? Because I know that uh, you work with Deborah Markowitz. So. Right. Right. Well, um, I don't really know how I, I got it. I think, you know, uh, I'm actually Jersey born, but I'm Long Island's like adopted son. <laughs> and uh, did she write it with you in mind because she wrote it? You know, no, I don't necessarily think she wrote it with me in mind. I think that, um, you know, Deborah and I have, you know, worked on different projects together. Mm -hmm. She's casted me in a few things. And, and now we're working on a project together as producers. Um, I think when, you know, the story came to her, I mean, you should ask her, but I think that, you know, once she saw it on paper, she knew who she wanted to play it, including the other actors that are involved. Yes. You know, I, I don't I don't even think she thought twice about casting it. She already, after she read it, she knew who she wanted. <laughs> you know, from the female lead to the other co-male lead, she basically had it down. Yeah. You know? So, now, I did a little investigating oh. of you, and I see you're also a music publisher. What about that? <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> well, I, I spent a good part of my, my youth in a band and living out of a van and having the time of my life. And then, you know, we um we came off the road and we're like you know we gotta do something with this you know so we decided to strip the vocals off and we um we actually sell our music as transition music to tv shows oh. you know and uh that's become fun you know we don't play out as much anymore but oh. you know do you play an instrument yes yes i play um guitar bass drums a little piano oh. and and sing we were uh, a three-piece power pop band Oh, so now, can your music also be heard in indie films? Because you do quite a quite a bit actually, of that. Actually, yes. <laughs> one of the film, one of the songs that we wrote, we actually uh, made a video for leaving, oh, with yeah. the with the video footage in it. And uh, instead of um, 
our band singing it we have this beautiful young lady who came in named Sophia Nicole and she sung it for us and we shot a video and um, the song like the movie is is um, came out simple and beautiful mm. which which is what we were trying to do so now I see music is your passion and you love acting is there any other hobbies that you might have or things you do in your downtime I, it, I don't have a lot of downtime <laughs> <laughs> but when you do, when you do, yes. when you do, because the name of the show is stage screen and in between, and I like to know sometimes right. what people do in between. The, the in between is is I have um, um, a big dog named Romeo. I was going to say, do you have pets? It came right to me. Yeah, yeah my big dog named Romeo. He's an uh, English Mastiff Mix rescue, uh -huh. and we hang out. That's what we oh. do. We'll take drives. We go hang out places, and, and he's my buddy. That's my in-between time, which I don't get a lot of. Well, well, listen, a Mastiff is a big dog, so I would imagine that he's doing a lot of walking to you. <laughs> Actually, you know what? He doesn't. He, he, yeah. we, we are side-by-side -side buddies. Oh, he's yeah, a, he's a very, no, he's a very well-behaved boy. Oh, yeah, I'm very lucky. He's a good boy. And then, you know, we have a new project coming up. Um, I've been spending a lot of time um, at the New Jersey State Senate House. Um, the project we're working on is called Choice. Uh -huh. and, it, and it's about the Death with Dignity Act. Um, if you're familiar with the Brittany Maynard story, yes. um, we're going to do a trilogy oh. um, about these uh, three movies that are going to show you different versions of why my personal feeling is that we should have the choice mm. to decide if we're terminally ill mm. that we can end our death not end our life but end our death oh. um and a lot of that was inspired by um by my father who had ms and watching people suffer um you know the fact that it came up in the new jersey senate was just uh, timing perfect timing so i was yeah. i've been spending a lot of time in a suit and 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 down at the senate house in new jersey oh, <laughs> which has been very enlightening it really has yeah. it's been really good you know uh researching this this subject it's um it's going to be um my project for the next year i'm actually going to step behind the camera a little bit also okay. yeah have you worked behind the camera before uh, not to this capacity, no. Oh. I have, but not to this oh. capacity. So that's good. That's a new frontier for you. Yeah. So on that note, we're going to be leaving because I have to talk to Deborah Markowitz. <gasps> no. <laughs> no, you can't. No. <laughs> thank you so much, Joe. No, thank you. Best of luck to you. Thanks. Changing in some way Nothing lasts 
I have with me now Sal Rendino, who is in leaving, and you played the psychiatrist. Yes, absolutely. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you did a great job. You really uh, had that commanding presence. Well, thank you very much. I credit that to the script, I think, you know? Well, it's not just the script. You know, you had to prepare for that. How, did you, how, did, how were you able to come across like that? Well, it's funny because I didn't... Uh, have to move at all i mean my blocking was like just sit there and be still and that's really hard for an actor who's kind of manic like me I'm, I'm used to you know being all over the place and being very physical so i had to just steady myself and center myself like i was the axis on which the earth turned you know yeah. and i knew my position was as kind of a gatekeeper and advisor for this thing so i had to be kind of an authority figure so stillness was mm -hmm. even more important so this was the first time you saw Leaving, correct? Yeah. What did you think of it? It was so moving. It was great to see it all put together. You know, when you're in it, you just see little pieces here and there, and you wonder if it's all going to fit together. And there's so many elements, like the music and the lighting and the sound in general that can really either take a movie up or take it out, you know? Right. And, and you probably didn't meet the other actors until just today, right? Right. Exactly right. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I recognize you. Now you're, uh, that's right. Yeah, you're in the film. Awesome. Good work. <laughs> Yeah. You're really a real person. Now, let me ask you, did you uh, work with Debbie before? Uh, I worked with her before on a short film called Junkie Heaven, oh, which was written by Lee I've Kalinske, that. and yes. that's in the process of getting exposure right now. So, yeah, she's uh, the lovely bonus in an actor's life that oh. keeps on remembering you and bringing you into different circles. Mm -hmm. So so now, uh, let me ask you, do you also do theater work? Because you look like a theater type of person. Yeah, I mean, I was out in L.A. for almost 12 years, and I did theater annually out there, sort of like the, you know, the school year when TV and film go on hiatus in the summer as you go do theater for three or four months. Um, but I haven't done theater on the East Coast yet. Oh. Yeah, so that's a new realm to dive into, and I'm, I'm anxious to get into it. Yes, yes, yes. I, th I think you do well. There's a lot of theater here. Yeah. So um, now let me ask you, what do you like to do in your spare time other than act and be involved with music? Wow. I have an 11 year old daughter so she keeps me young and old at the same time running around <laughs> like crazy you know all sports and all seasons so that keeps isn't me it active. the truth that keep you young and old at the same time i like the way you put that so what's what's next on the agenda or, or, what, or what do you hope to do well i've got two features shooting in boston one in um february and one in august that are slated already scheduled so that's great so i have that for 2015 and anything else is gravy now, uh, let me ask you, Debbie also directed Leaving. Yeah. Was she a taskmaster? You know, I didn't want to have to say this to anybody, <laughs> but uh, slave driver is the word I would mean, use. Yes. I mean, I didn't even get fed. I was there for like 38 hours straight, oh, didn't no. get out of the I know that's not true. I happen to know that they fed you very well. I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the type, you don't, you don't hold the, uh, the weight on your bones. You're yeah, that you type. Know, racquetball. I credit racquetball with that. <laughs> you get in the sweat box and work oh, for two hours. That's and... tough, racquetball. Is that something you like to do? Greatest individual sport known to man. Yeah, that can be dangerous if you get hit with that ball, yeah, too. you got to be thing that's yeah. gonna keep me young and kill me at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful. Well, thank you so much, and the best of luck on your future endeavors. Thank you. Thanks very much. The country continues to be in a state of emergency. How long are you still out here? Me? That's what I do. We ask that you remain inside. Oh. Highways are closed. 
<laughs> there is no public transportation. Hey! A new world awaits us. <laughs> Just open the door! <sighs> we will survive. Freaking deadbeats. Be safe. God bless you. And God bless America. We've just seen Leaving and the last taxi driver at the Belmore Movies here in Belmore. And we have the president with us. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Vincent Ticali, and uh, I play President Piconi in The Last Taxi Driver. So tell me, how did you prepare for that role? Who was your inspiration? Well, I mean, any number of presidents over the years trying to be presidential, give a speech, a television uh, address uh -huh. to the nation. Right. Now, was this the first time that you've seen the finished product, The Last Taxi Driver? Yes, it is. Yes. What do you think? Excellent. I thought everybody did a wonderful job. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, a zombie movie that's yes. after the apocalypse, and it's quite comedic, don't you think? It is. It, it definitely has a, a very tongue-in-cheek uh, feel to it. It doesn't take itself too seriously, which is nice. So tell me something about your background and how you met Debbie. Okay. Um, I am an actor, a musician. I've uh, been doing both for many years. Uh, I met Deborah... Um, I auditioned for something else for her and did not get the job, uh -huh. but uh, she was nice enough uh, to remember me and think of me for this, and, uh, and she cast me, which I'm grateful for. Right. She not only wrote it, directed it, but she cast the movies, right? right. She She's unbelievable. Many, many, hats. many, many hats. So let me ask you, what instruments do you play? I am a bass guitarist vocalist. Oh. Are you with a band now? I am, yes. What's the name? Uh, we're called Current Affair. We do weddings and corporate affairs. Uh -huh. So what do you do, uh, cover, cover music? Yes, all kinds, everything from swing to the you know, uh, dance music you, know, you would hear on WKTU, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. So what do you have coming up next? Uh, well, I just shot um, a featured role in uh, a movie called In Sickness. Uh, which was uh, written by uh, Judy St. Roman, oh, okay. who was also involved in That's the right. two films tonight. Yeah. Uh, and um, I'm involved in a, a web series that's uh, going to be shown on Hulu. I'm pretty excited about that. And um, we'll see. I have a couple of auditions uh, in the works and callbacks, so I hope it all turns out <laughs> well. <laughs> That's good, but there's nothing like working on a Deborah Markowitz film. Thank you so much for joining Thank you me. Thank so much. I appreciate it. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Well, look who I have here, the amazing Deborah Markowitz. You know, Deborah, if I wasn't holding this microphone, I would be applauding you right now. You are amazing. You're not only the, the Nassau County Film Commissioner, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You cast Leaving mm -hmm. and Last Taxi Driver. You wrote it. You directed it. How many hats do you wear? Plus, plus she's a published author. Did I forget anything? Well, yeah, I also run the Long Island International Film Expo with uh, some of my other cohorts here at the Belmore Movies. But yes, yeah, so I'm the Film Festival Director, uh, Nassau County Film Commissioner. Um, I'm a published author. I wrote the Carmen Quinn Trilogy. Um, I cast for other people. I produce for other people. And this I wrote, produce, direct, and cast. 
Now, uh, I guess you're not getting 24 hours to your day like the rest of us. You're getting like 48 to our 24. Time warp thing somehow. So I don't know how that happens, but yeah. So, so, so let me ask you, how did you um, come to write Leaving and The Last Taxi Driver? Because they're both very different. Last Taxi Driver is, is comedic. And Leaving really is a little mysterious, has a message, a surprise ending. So where do you get your uh, inspiration from? Well, last taxi driver, uh, my boyfriend and I, John, who was also my line producer and production manager, we were walking around Mill Pond with a dog. We always walk the dog. And um, we always come up with goofy little things. I mean, we both have a very silly, twisted sense of humor. And we just somehow came up with this this thought that what if, uh, you know, there was a taxi driver and all the people that were left were zombies. And, and it just kept growing and growing. And then one day I just actually sat down and wrote it. And I showed it to uh, Nugent Cantolino, who I, I work with on occasion. Nugent read it and said, we have to make this into a movie. And it just got sillier and sillier. And, and Robert Clehesi from Blue Bloods is the star. He is our taxi driver. Yes. And, and he's course, hysterical. He is. He's hilarious. <laughs> and of course, he would say, can I say this? Can I see that instead? And often what he said was better than what I even wrote. So it was so much fun. And it was really great. And you had a lot of diehard zombies because I could see the ice on the ground and the snow. And I'm like, oh, they must have been freezing. Yes, we, we had six different weather patterns, you know, between freezing snow, snow, rain. It was defrosting. The wind was out. I mean, it was just just crazy and I just would sit there and look up and say okay you obviously want me to make this movie so just let it happen you know so tell me about leaving because that was a little deep there was a message there um, leaving is, is very sentimental, the complete opposite of The Last Taxi Driver. And, and basically, it came out of a dream that I had. I, I'd woken up about 4.30 in the morning with tears streaming down my eyes. And um, I don't want to give it away, but it was just such a, a, a sad movie about somebody who leaves their family, even though they don't want to. And she misses her family, but she knows she can't really stay. Yeah. And um, in my dream, it was my boyfriend, you know, John. And, and I just like was saying, oh, you, you, kept, like, you kept the car, or, or um, how are things going with my daughter? Because I you know, hadn't been around. And, I, I got up and I said, oh, okay. I started remembering pieces of it. And I said, this is, needs to be a movie. So I sat down and it, from 4.30 at 7.30, I had the first draft of the script. Um, I sent it to Joe Halsey, who I had actually, I had auditioned him a couple of times, but I'd never met him. I'd, I had met him, but I'd never worked with him before. And I just knew I wanted him for the husband. So I sent it to him. He read it immediately, called me back and said, I love this so much that if you want to make this into a movie, I'll help you raise the money. Yeah. And, um, and he did. And then Molly, I, uh, Molly Ryman, who, um, uh, uh, plays Emily uh, Hemming. She, I had seen her in a movie, Things I Don't Understand, and I just knew she was somebody I wanted to work with. So I had to see how they would look together. And Sal, I had auditioned Sal Rendino for another movie. Um, I think it was two movies I auditioned him for. And there's five million reasons an actor doesn't get a job, but I knew how brilliant he was, and I couldn't wait to put in my own movie. So one good thing about directing your own movies, you get to pick the cast. So um, they just all work so well together, and they're all so brilliant. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, yes, yes. You know, they made this great movie, and Mark Ryu, my DP, is just so phenomenally talented. And yeah, and the editing was so good, too. And isn't it nice that we get to be at the Belmore movies with Annie and Henry, and because this is where we hold the, the expo, you know? So tell me, Debbie, what's, what's next for you? What are you working on now? Oh, I'm working on a lot of things. Um, I'm 110 pages into a novel called Damage But Not Broken is the working title, uh, but somebody was just telling me it needs to be pitched as a television series, so I'm going to try and write it that way um, as okay. I continue. I'm also uh, finishing up a script, which I hope to have the first past um, the first week of the new year. It's called Behind the Scenes, which um, is going to be uh, produced with Donna Siriani, and mm -hmm. I'm writing that with her. And uh, then I have uh, four films I'm going to be doing with Joe Halsey. Um, I wrote one called... Only four? You're such a lazy bones. <laughs> So I wrote one called Brother, which which uh, David Spalto is going to direct. Joe wrote one called Pop slash Father, which I'm going to direct. And um, David wrote one called uh, Daughter, which Joe's going to direct. So I know it's an interesting exercise because they're all such talented people. And yeah. David, I've been such a fan of David's um, since he won the festival a couple of years ago. Best story, best picture, best director. So I'm yeah. so excited to be working with him. Isn't that wonderful? Because you, you get to know each other's flow and you flow with each other. And you can. that's wonderful that you can collaborate like that well Debbie thank you for talking to me and we're gonna be looking for all your films thank you so much Helen I appreciate it thank you